Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to my channel. I'm Lorena, Lorena Creel, of course, bringing you that spice to sci-fi and pop culture analysis, and always keeping it real when it comes to theme parks. And welcome to another episode of An Audience with the Queen, where I bring interesting people onto the channel for this like one-on-one -on -one conversation so you can get to know more about them and find out what they're doing out there in the interwebs and you know, offline and all of all of that stuff. And I love introducing people to my audience that I find interesting and I run into in these circles of friends that I hang out with. And of course, with me today, here is Matt Ankeny. How are you doing? I I'm hope great. I did. Thank you so I much. Said that. <laughs> oh, no, you did. So, Ankeny, you said it great. Perfect. Okay. I've absolutely. been a long time subscriber to your channel and uh, it's great to be here. Super oh. excited. Thank you. Thank you. I just it it's it's still so strange to me in, in, in a good way when people are like, Oh, I've been watching your channel for like the longest time. And in my head, I'm just like, Wow, isn't that interesting? I mean <laughs> it's it's a funny thing to bring up because when because people always ask me, you know, how how did you do this YouTube thing? Did you always want to be on YouTube? I'm like, no, not really. I would be in the chat, chatting with people, saying things and stuff on the panel, and they thought that it was, you know, it was funny. But I just like interacting with the chat and people who would say hello and form those kind of like bonds and just saying stuff. And people are like, when are you gonna start your YouTube channel? I'm like, why? I just crashed your channel and everyone. <laughs> else's channel i don't need my own channel to do it and people kept saying do it do it do it i'm like okay fine if you leave me alone i'll just do that and people started following me i'm like okay all right i guess it's it, it's still fast it still fascinates me and i love meeting people who are like i've been subscribed to you for the longest time i like what you're doing i'm like oh okay cool that's that's cool i, I love hearing that and you know and it's because I'm used to just subscribing to other people and saying the exact thing. I like your channel because it's so-and-so and such and such. And when people say it to me, it's uh, it's it's such a blessing. So I feel like I've arrived more than, you know, I've been on uh, other streams. And I just, today, I feel like I've arrived. I've <laughs> arrived. I'm here. I'm I'm on the Miss Lorena show, if you want to say. I, I like these little one-on-ones, you know. And, and so we met on a panel. And, yes. Uh, for the last year, I've been on these panels and on these YouTube shows and, and met all these wonderful people, friends of yours, friends of mine, stuff like that. It's been great. But it's, these are more conversation based. So I really look forward to to having a conversation. And uh, I, I don't know if you or the audience is having difficulty out there lately finding that conversation is kind of dying or it's more difficult to have. So rest assured, hopefully we have a great one. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. It's kind of it's kind of like when my uh, southern relatives would have people <laughs> over. I mean, there's, you know, there's the company that crashes your house and, you know, they're all there. And then there's the people who they don't come to the front door. They come to the back door where the kitchen is, you know, kitchen. and... Yeah, they, they come, you know, they're there and it's like that kind of like that one-on-one -on -one conversation that you have, you know, in the kitchen, catching up with life and, and all of that. It's, yeah, I, I would watch my relatives kind of like do that. And there was just something, there's always entertaining when all kinds of people are at the house and, you know, they're having that conversation, they're having some but fun, but it's just something special about when I would watch these one-on-one -on -one conversations kind of like uh, happen. And it just felt that people got to got to know each other um, a bit better. Life kind of like stops with mm -hmm. all the craziness that's going yeah. on. And you just, you, just get to, you just get to talk. Yeah, eavesdropping on a quiet moment between maybe older relatives when you're younger is, is sometimes life-changing in a way. It really shows who you are, where you come from. And I love those moments. You seem like an extroverted person, Lorena. I'm an extrovert. I don't know about you, but you seem like you like people. You're an extrovert. Do you find it that way? Or are, are you more introverted? I'm so introverted, dude. Really? <laughs> what, what are you no, no, no wonder the way you looked at me like that. I, I just, interesting. That's so do you find it 
uh, draining to be in public and it's kind of exhausting to talk to people that you've met for the first time and it's because you're out all the time. I fascinating. It's it's like um I'm glad you asked me that question. Um I was very soft spoken as a kid. I um, you know I had a soft voice. I felt, you know, very very like self-conscious especially since I was a firstborn kid. So parents would throw me out there to do stuff. Cool. And I just, I just wasn't. I was just one of those where I, I like, I like to eavesdrop on conversations a lot, and found out, you know, old people tend to drop a lot of secrets when they don't know that you're around. So <laughs> I would kind of just oh. hang around and 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 you know and do that. But the the older that I that I got. It's like, okay, well, you have to do kind of these extroverted things. So it's like, okay, there's there's a time limit. So there's some people who I know, they like to do, like say live stream for five, six hours and they oh, love yeah. it. I'm like, me, I'm like, all right, we got a time limit. <laughs> with what's, uh, yeah. With what's going on, unless it's with a, a insular group of people where we just, we just bounce off of each other so much mm -hmm. we forget, you know, the passage of time. But for me, it's like I like meeting new people. I like getting out there. But at the same time, it's kind of like after that period of time, I kind of need to, you know, kind of go back into the bushes. It's kind of like I'm out in the park with like a bubble around yeah. me, so to speak. And I'm kind of looking at people I'm like, oh, OK, we'll watch this. We'll watch this. We'll do that. And then it's just like, okay, I need to recharge. So I'm gonna go disappear somewhere. Sure. And and then and then I'll be back. But it's it's interesting. People are like, Yeah, you're really extroverted. I'm like, I, I play one for a limited amount of time. <laughs> you look great. You're it's I think it's like the perfect balance. Again, like your channel your channel, <coughs> excuse me. Your channel has just a great balance and flow. It just feels so natural. It's so easy to hit a video to flow through it. There's a lot of movement in it. You're typically when you're on the scene, you're walking. And I think that people, there's a psychological familiarity with that. They're kind of like walking with you and there's a sense of companionship. And I just, I love your, your channel. It's super refreshing. So yeah. it's just fun. It's just pure yeah. fun. I think we need that now. We definitely. No, oh, thank you. So it's, it's fascinating that you manage your uh, your people time. What do you do in your downtime? Are you a reader? Oh, you play video games sometimes, right? Um, I played video games. I'm starting to get back into it because there was a well, there was a point in time where I had more time than money, so I could play a lot of video games. Yeah. And then it started to flip the other way, where I didn't have time to play video games, but I was always buying them. So for oh. downtime, yeah. Bummer. Yeah. Me and comic books. I have so many I haven't read yet. It's ridiculous. I'm, I'm with you. Go ahead. It's it's just it's yeah. just it's just nuts. Like my like my my nephews would be like, "Can you buy me Soul Calibur Thor? Dot dot dot. This one, this one, this one." And I'm in a video store. Like, yeah, I used to spend this money on myself, but now you know now I now I don't anymore. But uh, downtime stuff. Um, when I can read, I'll try to read. Um, I'll try to read when I get a chance. Um, I cook a lot. Like I love cooking shows. I love watching Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. That's one of my favorite thing. I'm a Gordon Ramsay fan. I am. Kitchen Nightmares. The way that he's just so straightforward with them. You know, the truth hurts. It really does. Are you going to get better or are you just going to be mediocre or terrible and mm -hmm. your, your customers and embarrassing yourself? I love that. I love those shows, really. Self-improvement is something that I, that I value. I try to instill... You know, that's my thing. I, you know, so. Is there like a certain self improvement area that you're more interested in than than others, or? Um, I guess there's all these physical, mental, emotional. Uh, I'm just trying to find a balance, uh, particularly with my social life. And I'm out there mm -hmm. dating people, and I'm showing up, and uh, I'm an extrovert, so maybe unlike someone like yourself, if I'm invited somewhere, I'll go. It doesn't take me much to say, whatever happens, I will have fun, or at least it's a new place, or mm -hmm. maybe this person, I'll become friends or whatever. So 
but it's rough. It's hard. I'm a little older. Most of the available women out there, unfortunately, they skew younger, which is fine with me. But then, you know, there's a generation gap sometimes and we live in mm -hmm. a crazy world. I, I could have a channel. It would probably be for members only about my dating life and the people that I meet, how dates go. I'm sure it would do very well. Uh, I, I don't think I would do that though, but wow, would that be spicy as, as this <laughs> likes to put it, that would be the ultra spice lounge with Matt for members. <laughs> for members only. Keeping it, keeping it private. No, no name, all, all people, all names and things change to, how do they say that on TV? To I, protect the guilty. To protect their, yeah, we could do a dragnet style too, if you'd like. But so anyway, that's very interesting that you bring that up because I tell people, I said, you know, maybe one day, I don't know if it'll be a show. I don't know if it'll be a screenplay. I mean, there's always a screenplay. I, I keep threatening my family with about our crazy, you know, crazy oh. life. But I'm just like, maybe one day I will explain or reveal to others what it was like dating in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. I don't have those stories. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What year was that? What era was that? If you don't mind me asking what era, what, because that kind of depends. I would say, I would say like in the, like in the 2000s, like 20, 2000s to like 20, I want to maybe say like 2010 or something like that. Uh, talking about your dot com. Mm -hmm. era. Yes, I know I'm dating myself, but it's okay. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> just with going from someone who I, I always wanted to move to LA as, as a kid. It's like, I'd watch them. I'm like, that's where movies are made. That's where cool television shows are made. That's what I see like all the time, you know, in TV and movies. So I'm is, like, okay. Yeah, me too. That was my experience as an American kid. That's where a lot of culture comes from. It, especially at that time that we grew up. Yeah. It was California. Yeah. It's like everybody wanted to go. If you, if you had, if you, you were considered weird, if you didn't want to, you know, want to go there. So when I got the opportunity to, uh, to go there, like to work, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'm here. This is great. I'm in LA. I'm looking at all this stuff I'd only seen on television and like, wow, I live here now. In about five months, I'm like, I can't freaking believe I live here. Let me tell you what happened, this thing, that thing. It was it was very interesting. And people will say, well, how did you like living in L.A.? I said, well, it looked better on television. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a, a, a harsh indictment of, of Los <laughs> Angeles. It's just, I, I can't imagine. You dated in L.A. Let, let me ask ask you this last night i drove a, a pretty fair distance one way for a date what's the farthest you've ever driven one way for a date uh, maybe about 15 miles 15 just because miles. of where it was mm -hmm. um <laughs> let's put it this way where it was was a critical mass of people and shopping and tourism and that's just where it happens like to like to be but i'm like not like a big i mean i love to drive but for something like that i was like no that's about yeah. as as far as uh as i wanted to go i drove 45 minutes last night one way and it turned out to be a complete nightmare oh my god and to cope with the date towards the end mm -hmm. i never do this. This is how bad it was. I had to like shake my leg when it was just unbearable. I had to like, like do a coping mechanism thing that I've never done in my life. Like the last 20 minutes was about a tumor that the doctors won't admit is there. That was my last 20 minutes. It was about a tumor that they had to keep Woo, I'm still recovering from my date. <laughs> so, um, 
Isn't it interesting what people consider to be first date material? And you're just like, why uh, are you telling me this? <laughs> uh, and you know what? Yeah, like I here's the thing. I think you you get this kind of nuance, and I think the audience gets this nuance. Go ahead and talk about yourself. Talk about yourself. Talk about yourself for the for 30 minutes straight. If you're interesting, if you climbed a mountain, if you met Walt Disney, if if you had an amazing story or a, a juicy anecdote about life, or you you just you're you're in, I can sit back a day and just go ahead and, and listen. But when mm -hmm. it's all about themselves and just strange, too much information, it's just insane. I just I can't I can't get a normal date that just communicates normally, just in that way. They, they're normal in the sense that they're normal, they show up on time and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the communication, I don't know if it's text messaging, I don't know. Here's what I felt like last night. We can stop talking about this for your marriage. <laughs> I don't I don't know my you know, hear about this stuff or not. I felt, I, I'm in my 40s. I listen to you, I communicate. I'm, I'm literally interested in you. I wanna hear about your day your views in life. What do you like? Do you like movies? Do you like TV? Do you like tennis? Do you like hiking? What do you like? And then I can kind of ask you more questions. Mm -hmm. But um, I felt like I was speaking with an early thirties person who communicated to me in a social media post where I'm just like the, the viewer, the commenter, mm -hmm. it's just all them, all their problems. And it mainly was their problems. And Stuff like that. So I'm old fashioned. I'm old fashioned. I mainly ignore this world. My phone, it has no apps on it. It has YouTube. It has YouTube music. Oh, wow. I don't have <laughs> Facebook. I don't have TikTok. I don't, you know, I do use Facebook. I do use Twitter or X or whatever. I try to keep it really, really real. My latest thing at night is uh, after dinner, just listening to music. And uh, that's my thing now. It's usually a film, it's usually a classic movie. Mm -hmm television i like for the last few years i was really into tcm app for my roku tv so uh, you might like that any film that they show on tcm within hours it's just loaded right into the on-demand section of your tcm app and i have just gor gorged myself on just the best films that i possibly can for the last few years and so and that's helped my writing tremendously and something that i'm in that mode now to do so I highly recommend it. TCM app for your for your tip television. Perfect. Among the other dozen of apps that I have on my phone, not that I want to have them on there, but they just happen to be on there. And, it, and it's interesting how you talk about social media and the way that there's a lot of people these days. Tech is like a two-edged sword. It's like it's done wonders for people, but at the same time, it's cut out i think that layer of true human um interaction like facebook i yeeted that I, <laughs> I told people i said my relatives i said okay um i'm on instagram if you yeah. really need to find me right. but facebook is not my thing people say did you see my facebook post why did you see this why yeah. and i look at it and facebook seems to be at least for me appeals to two groups of people Okay, I'm ready. Um, let's see. You have the people who want to talk about themselves all the time. Correct. Yes. And then you have old people, 70 plus years old, rehashing 50 year old beef on the regular. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I can't believe you. <laughs> Do you know how old you are? And I'm just like, this is insane. I like, imagine I if that was a place that you walked into Facebook. It, no one would be in there. No one would, would want to stay in there. No. And in their right mind, I guess there'd be some crazy people in there or whatever. And not to pick on people or whatever, but I find I find it is antisocial and, and kind of uh bad for your mental health in, in many ways. I try yeah. to stay away from that. I don't deal with it. My sister was like, oh, did you see my post on, post on Facebook? I said, no. You can, it's like, you can, you can, you can text me and find out what it is. But I just, I was just like, that is so not my thing to do. It's not my ecosystem. 
I would piss off so many people and not care, which is one of the reasons why I'm not uh, why I'm not on why I'm not on Facebook. But but it it is it's like the short attention span when it comes to communication. Like you're talking about Turner classic films. Like there's some classic films where I will sit there yeah. and I will watch it. Like one of my favorite genres of classic film are the old monster movies. So we see like Dracula, Frankenstein. Um, one of my favorites, which I did not like the Netflix remake for so many reasons. And that would be the fall of the house of Usher. Yeah, the Vincent Price version is mm -hmm. the definitive version. I love Poe. I visited some of Poe's former homes on the East Coast, I believe in Baltimore. I don't know if you've ever been that way. No. Neighborhoods now. But uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe is a national treasure. And he seems he seemed more relevant in the 90s, didn't he? And now he just doesn't seem super relevant, but I would think that, well, what else? What else about Poe? Are he is, I would, I would say, and this was just, this was just me in English class. Whenever we would get things from Poe, he was just so, I would say descriptive and yet creepy at the same time. And as you know, teenagers reading this stuff, like I can't believe we're reading this stuff in school. This is like, this is great. And especially if you were into um, like monster films or gothic horror films, just the way that he would set the scene and you could just picture it you know, um, in your mind, which is why I love to follow the House of Usher because it's like, I read that and then to see it on screen and see those performances, what I just thought was just absolutely, um, was absolutely fascinating, you know, to, to me, people who would like appreciate um, classic, classic literature. And one of the things that I love about pop culture that I tell people, I said, there's so many themes that are the same and the films that seem to do really well will pull from those classics and we'll say make them relatable to contemporary times but it all goes back to you know to classic literature so i i love it when that happens with films i i totally agree um george lucas and his family donated money to have the mask of the red death film version with Vincent Price completely restored to Blu-ray. Have you seen that? No, I have not. What are you talking about it. it's amazing. It's Vincent Price's Prince Prospero, and he's kind of terrorizing the the peasantry around the castle. And then he's out at the beginning of the film, and someone gets the red death. They get sick, and Vincent Price is very afraid of it, and they kind of retreat back to their castle. And they have a big party. And that's essentially the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Mask of the Red Death, that a tyrant king is deathly afraid. Uh, funny, there's a pun there. Deathly afraid of a plague. And um, in my high school junior English class, when we read that, my teacher, we didn't do this for other authors at all. We like turned off the lights. She like lit candles. She really made an atmosphere. She would read it, create an atmosphere. And she called, she said that Edgar Allan Poe, he, act, he accessed this thing called the hypnagogic state. And it's kind of a, a pseudo psychedelia horror mode that mm -hmm. it's a human experience, like the uncanny valley. It's like when people get creeped out by dolls or certain things that we all share these you know you get goosebumps you all yeah these things so he he tapped into that he is awesome and i'm, I'm sure edgar Allan poe has inspired not only authors and filmmakers but people in bands you know uh want to be poets and and real poets and everybody in between so yeah i i really like poe he's awesome i love halloween i love halloween i love all that nightmare before Christmas, Tim Burton. Oh, I love that one. You're a Tim Burton guy, you're 
What's your favorite, um, Tim Burton? Do you have a favorite like Beetlejuice or Nightmare? Man, that is that is that is tough. If we're, t if we're talking animation, okay. um, definitely the Nightmare Before Christmas. Is awesome. I mean. Me and my friends, we called it Christmas on crack. I remember when the <laughs> film first came out and the trailers were coming out for it. Me and a whole bunch of friends were like, did you see this? Did you, did you see this? I can't believe this exists. And yeah. between the story, the animation, the score, which is one of the best um, the animated scores ever, the, the music, people were buying the music. That franchise makes a ton of 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 money and it's had so much staying power i remember taking my nieces and nephews to see it when it was re-released in 3d wow. and they're these little kids and they're fascinated that's great like it, they did but they're just like fascinated so that's that's like my favorite tim burton um animated um the worst tim burton film for me was plan nine from no no i think it was ed wood, ed wood. They were, <laughs> i just i couldn't i couldn't really pay attention oh, to goodness. that one my aunt took me to see ed wood uh back in the day we both watched it we thought it was kind of funny i saw that ed wood in the theater i think i've seen most of these in the theater mm -hmm. yeah nightmare i saw at a mall crowded mall and nightmare came out in november so we were packed in this mall theater of just like major Christmas shopping families and kids. And you're right. Mm -hmm. The being at home television on, like it was back in the day, the second that trailer hit where Jack Skellington walks down the hillside that unfurls, that was the few seconds that we all saw mm -hmm. and it, it blew us away. And like you said, that's just, claymation that that's not cgi that's not some underpaid guy in a cubicle mm -hmm. going like the mouse and just being screamed at to go faster no they were having fun you can tell you can tell now today the the films that we watch that are terrible that the people making it are having no fun you can tell that 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 was tremendous fun and you're right it's so weird how that simple little halloween animated claymation film resonates and and it's just you know, people, they, they pay so much money to see um, the original, what's the name of the composer? I'm now blanking on the composer, the, Danny Elfman. Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. A handful of times he'll do a performance based around, around this performance and it's really expensive. So, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that film, um, the other Tim Burton film, of, cor of course, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Did did you see the trailer for Beetlejuice too? Uh, yeah, just part of it. I do like Beetlejuice a lot. He had an animated cartoon when I was a kid too. You know, so there's a there's a Beetlejuice thing going. Uh, no, um, Tim Burton is he's pretty cool, but he's unfortunately not producing. He's not in his peak, is he? Anymore? No, and it's and it's you can you can kind of see that. Um, I want to say it really started to decline with uh, Dark Shadows, which I just saw like a couple of years ago. I'm like, okay, yeah, no, I know why people kind of forgot that. But with him, right. with like Beetlejuice was my favorite, and then um, what else did I see? I liked Sleepy Hollow. I really did like that. Yeah. Um, I still like Tim Burton's version of Batman. Um, I'm always going to like that. <laughs> no, uh, no, no matter what. But yeah, for his films, it's it's they no longer, at least for me, like held my attention the way that the way that they used to. Yeah. So when Beetlejuice two, when that trailer came out, I think a lot of that has to do with nostalgia because the way that the trailer was set up, where you got to see. Delia's family and everyone in the family it 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 gave just like great callback vibes to to the to the I hope movie. people like it we're in a time now that's really I think dissatisfying to tons of people they're just remaking things it's cynical. Mm -hmm. they buy these properties up they don't take care of them 
they eventually ruin them. They strive for the wrong audience. They do all that. And you've, you've heard our friends on other channels go to great lengths to talk about that. I'm with you on that. So I just, 70s films are kind of my bread and butter. Seven, any, any kind of 70s film. It can be an indie film. It'd be kind of boring and slow, just two people, or it can be The Godfather. It can be oh, Star Wars. It can be anything. <laughs> so I'm, I do barely remember the 70s. And if you, maybe people out there, uh, the early 80s were culturally a lot like the 70s. They looked and felt like the 70s. And so, I think that's where artists took risks. They were allowed to. Agreed. We're talking about Tim Burton. So there's no Tim Burton anymore. So who's Tim Burton now? I'm sure there is. And the audience members will say, hey, Matt, you're wrong. You, this guy. But like, we're losing that. And then in the, in the 70s, they were allowed to take risks. I have a background in art and in, in, uh, in fine art. And we were we were taught and we were encouraged to just be yourself. Mm -hmm. take risks and uh, just keep in mind that your audience doesn't want to be bored or they don't want to, their values challenged too much. And, or if you can, that's your audience that wants to be provoked. Some, some people have an audience where they provoke their audience very hard. And that's, that's, that's a thing. And so I see hope for the future and good entertainment that we can all enjoy. And, I wanted to ask you this, Lorena, you, you, you're an entertainment, you're an entertainer, you're an introvert entertainer, which is fascinating <laughs> you know, this is quite a bit. I don't think people appreciate how much time this takes, how, if you could ballpark, like the time a week, it takes you everything from preparation to doing your YouTube recording. How many, how many hours do you spend? If you don't mind letting us know. That is an excellent question. And I haven't really paid a lot of time if i would say maximum i would say probably about 20 hours 20. It's, it's definitely a um a part-time gig because i know when i when i start first it's kind of like what, what you know what do i really want to do what, what do i want to talk about usually it starts with twitter where i'm like ah what's kind of interesting i mean I, I i have i have the blue check mark because i like being able to bookmark my stuff because that's how my that's how my brain works it's like that's interesting okay put that over here put that in this bucket put that in this bucket and pay attention to that and then when i look at what i want to do for video then i'll kind of deep dive further so it's a lot of finding out what's out there, what's what's on the radar, kind of doing a, a deep dive to find, you know, more information. Because there's some things that are just, what I call them, uh, like empty calorie topics. Yeah. Not really a lot of depth. They may be funny, you know, and then there's some where an article may be, you know, purely clickbait and there's nothing really under that. So, you know, I have to go and look, I'm like, no, that's not true. No, that's not true. Okay. So then that's where I'm going to talk about the stuff that's really, you know, really true under the surface. Um, I do not like editing, which is why I do more live streams than anything else. I don't, I don't have an editor. Um, I, I don't, I don't like editing, but when I do edit, it's like, um, heads down, you know, doing, um, doing stuff because speaking of editing and I'd actually talked about this with pro we're going to talk about pro a little bit I have an intro for the spice lounge that isn't always the same every week mm -hmm. if there's video related to a topic I may be talking about I'll intercut that into the intro it's kind of like why it's like well stops things from being stale mm -hmm. You know, that takes time to, you know, to edit and do live streams. I probably spend more time finding articles and information than I actually do plan in the live stream. I mean, it's I, I'm because I'm so busy. I'm just like, OK, uh, yeah, we're just going to do this and we're just going to shoot the breeze and talk about it and find out whatever the heck is, you know, whatever the heck is going on. Some people have them meticulously planned. Um, I do not. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unless I'm right. producing the Dark Council, then I have a list of stuff, you know, to do. And I'm kind of in the background, just pushing buttons and saying, hey, you need to hurry up because we need to end the show. Yeah. You know, it's such and such a time where I have to pull articles up because uh, I'm not going to call out who they are. But their internet is in their parents' basement. Oh. <laughs> it's not so <laughs> it's an inside. It's an inside joke. It's I, inside. I love you, Fatal. It's an inside joke that you know that uh, you know that we uh, that we say. But that's pretty much how much time um, how much time I spend. And I didn't really realize that was how much time you would spend in doing stuff for YouTube. At least if you want to put something out there that's a good product. It's you know anybody can rip off like a video on the top, you know, off the top of their heads. Don't really care that much about the quality of oh, it. They just kind of want to put it, you know, they just want to kind of put it out there to say that they put a, that they put a video out there. Um, Your content's never like that ever. It never comes off like that, by the way. Oh, thank you. Not that you're saying that you feel like it is, but your, your content is solid. I know what you mean though. I know what you mean. That would, that would, that would take less time out of your day. Wouldn't it? That's kind of a shortcut to YouTube. Mm -hmm. hosting right just ripping people's content off yeah reusing you, you know you reusing the content. So organized is, is, you're a pretty organized person that's where you thrive right yes schedules lists dates schedules yeah. lists uh check boxes um i like to know what's going on i like to know where my time is being spent and especially when it comes to pop culture what films are coming out, what TV series are coming out. A lot of it is timing. So you kind of have to pay attention to uh, to all of that because there's so many moving parts. And as a professional, you know, I'm a project manager. So I like deadlines. Oh, I, I yeah. yeah, there's risks that are coming out. I had a schedule. Mm -hmm. Some people are just like, I can't believe you know, like what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, I'm like, I have to. It's like I, I have to have a plan without a plan. I I don't like unorganized um well, unorganized chaos. That is a that is an oxymoron. But I I like to have as less chaos as possible, but also knowing that there's some things that could happen to just blow things out of proportion right. and gotta call an audible and uh, you know, re uh, retrench. That does that does happen. Yeah. But yeah. You, you kind of, you kind of do. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, uh, I, I'm an outdoor person. I'm a wilderness guide in the Ozarks and I climb mountains. I do outdoor photography. I get up at four in the morning and I have to have everything ready to go. Nothing can go wrong because it's dangerous. And so being prepared and doing stuff like that, I just, uh, I feel you on. Oh, you're showing. Yes. Yeah. And it's really beautiful. Yeah, the top image is me. A half thousand feet. That was yesterday. That's a trillium. That's a native wildflower. Um, that, yeah, that's a, that's a thing called the Indian peaks wilderness. Um, so or the one yeah. I just rolled by. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's in a thing called the Indian Peaks Wilderness, and that's in a national forest in Colorado, and that's at 11,500 feet. I'm walking across a snowbank that's probably 15 feet high. That snowbank in the background is a lake, um, and so oh. that's what I do for fun. I get up at 4 in the morning. Uh, I wow. walk through snow up through mountains, and I take photos, and uh, it's awesome. I it makes you feel incredibly alive. And it, 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 it takes me up to six months to prepare from the moment, maybe in January where I decide where to go in the summer till, you know, this is like, this could be anywhere from late May, June, July. The snow doesn't really melt until mid July, uh, late July. So sometimes when I get to the mountains in the summertime, it looks like that, but yeah, like preparation, uh, I'll prepare, long form concentrate on one thing for six months and so wow yeah. and so when you prepare the results when you finally get there in performance like an olympic athlete it's like a professional athlete it's like a professional dancer entertainer they mm -hmm. prepare then they have their performance the day that i go out on a nice day with my camera on my backpack that's when i need to hit the trail see as many things as i can and perform and then take a great image like that right there 
is a is a trillion. It's called Red Wake Robin to average folk. Uh, a botanist will call it a trillion. A trillion is a sensitive wildflower with a uh, with a red delicate bloom that kind of comes out of a, a three petal center stem. And uh, so right now the Ozarks are blooming. It's beautiful out there. And I wish people could see it. Uh, I'm kind of, I'm an, like I said, I'm an extrovert. I started a business. It's called Missouri Ozark Wilderness Guide. You can find that on where? Facebook, unfortunately. <laughs> Isn't that funny? But if you're in the Midwest in the next month, I will say this. If you out in the audience, if you're in the Midwest, in Missouri, St. Louis area for the next month, it's beautiful out there. God bless America. We live in a beautiful country. Uh, I used to work for the Mark Twain National Forest. I was an Ozark Trail. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I, I worked out of a tent on a seasonal basis in a primitive campsite. I would get up at six. I would make my oatmeal in my tent. I'd be in my truck at about seven and I'd go down country roads and I would stop <coughs> where the Ozark Trail comes through Missouri. The Ozark Trail is 300 miles long. So that butterfly is a that butterfly is a, a zebra swallowtail butterfly. And every time I leave my house and I truck out into the Ozarks, they're everywhere. And they only eat one or two types of wildflower. So that that zebra swallowtail is just amazing. And you don't see this in the city. And so, yeah, I, if you would like to uh, go for a guided hike, Missouri Ozark Wilderness Guide, and you can mm -hmm. contact me through there. I do that on the weekend. And uh, I've been wow. doing that for a while. Pro likes to hear my stories out in the woods and stuff. Yeah, I lived in a tent. It was really a life-changing experience. I, I was uh, immersed in nature for, for prolonged periods with no mm -hmm. service by myself sleeping in a tent uh i would hit the ozark trail in the morning and i would hike about five miles and i would uh i had a gas power tool it's like a weed whacker but on the end it's like a saw it's like a circular saw so you uh -huh. hike down the trail with gas 60 pound pack food water gasoline you have a harness then you have this gas powered weed whacker thing hooked to your harness. So it's kind of, you don't have to really hold it. You go down the trail and one of the trails overgrown, you turn on this thing and you just start clearing the trail and you get to points maybe where there's a, a plastic thing on the tree for hikers to find their way. It's called a blaze. You, you replace those or make sure that they're there so people don't get lost mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And so I would hike like 10 miles a day. I come off the trail wow. sometimes covered in ticks. I would work from seven to five p.m. and then I would race home in my truck back to my tent, mm -hmm. put my clothes off, take my ticks off, go take a shower. Sometimes there's a shower place. Sometimes I have to like bathe in the river down where I am in the campsite. Then I quickly have to wash my clothes at a at like a water pump thing into a plastic basin. Wash my clothes, hang them up to dry. And then go in my tent. I don't have much time for, I really need to sleep. I'm exhausted. So I don't have refrigeration. I don't have modern anything. It's right. like, like the 1800s. So I have oatmeal for breakfast. I have like peanut butter and jelly and, you know, chips and stuff for lunch. And I have oatmeal for dinner and coffee with cranberries and nuts and raisins. It's more like a fortified oatmeal. And then I would write a journal. I would write a journal and I didn't have cell service. So around lunchtime, I'd be in a truck up on a high Ozark Ridge. And sometimes I'd look at my phone. I go, oh, so I post what I wrote. And I had a log about my life living in the Ozarks. And so I hiked 200 miles in seven weeks. And I made wow. 75 miles of Ozark Trail by myself. It was it was incredible. I could have only done this with my my preparation, my athletic skill, and and just trying to dig down deep. It was very difficult. It was, it was exhausting and it was very difficult, all aspects of it, but I love the outdoors. That right there is a flower called Spring Beauty. And Spring Beauty is found th 
throughout the continental United States, Tennessee, high elevations, the Smokies, North mm -hmm. Carolina, and then out here in Missouri and Arkansas and stuff like that. So as I've been hiking, I never said I wanted to be a uh, pseudo expert of wildflowers, but when you just go out and you do adventures, Lorena, I think you get this. You didn't mean to become a park expert. You didn't mean, you just liked parks. You just went there. It just, mm -hmm. after those times of revisiting and over and over again, then it's really neat. You grow and you evolve. And I evolved into this nature guy. I was in bands. I was in rock bands. I play the guitar. I still write songs, but I'm just more of a, I like, I like nature. I like the outdoors. So it's strange because for me, with the allergies that I have, um, nature is not really my friend, <laughs> but depending on what it is, I'll like risk it to do that. <laughs> because there's so many things that I find interesting um, in nature, especially with moving uh, with moving to Florida. There's so many weird birds and gators and lizards and critters sure. around yeah. that when I see them, it's like, I have to stop, you know, I have to stop and look. There's these birds that I've never seen before. Wow. And there's so many of them. Um, even if like, say I walk to my car, I'll see them either there or on my car. Um, some of the one birds I think that I saw I was I was out walking. There's so many retention ponds um, down here, and natural, you know, natural ponds. And I just happen to be looking, and then I see this bird come out of the water, then go back down into the water. Wow. And I'm like, what, what did I just see? Uh, I, I was I was like, I've seen a flying fish before. I've seen that. That does not phase me. But I have never seen a bird that purposely goes into the water. And the first thing I did is I pulled out my phone and I'm like, bird that goes under the water in Florida. And it was called like an ahinga or something like that. This beautiful, lean, blue, like bird that when he's drying his, you know, his wings out, he's got this impressive wingspan, but how they, how he fishes is he'll go down into the water and hold his breath and pick off, you know, pick yeah. off fish and come and come back out. And seeing things like that, um, it just fascinates me because it helps me disconnect yeah. from the technology in the world. It's like, yes, I'm in IT, I love it. But at the same time, my perfect vacation would be shutting my phone off and throwing it in the water someplace. And I'm just out there with as much nature as I can, uh, as I can stand. And when I go out and I do, and, and you're right with respect to like parks, I love going through parks and seeing the things that are out there, the things that I wouldn't normally see in the inside. So when I'm at these theme parks, especially taking into account the setting where, where things are, and I forget which live stream it was, where I actually saw a um, uh, aigret, which was almost wiped out in the state of Florida because it's a, it's a white bird. It's got mm -hmm. like a yellow beak and it has these beautiful white feathers where they're very wispy at the ends and at one point in time in florida they were basically poached almost to extinction because people wanted those feathers you know to use in various various things but species has bounced back but either way i'm out at the parks and i think we were in the magic kingdom and i'm like oh look at this egret it's so beautiful egret decided it was going to eat a couple of lizards right then and just <laughs> 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 i'm like that's something you don't normally you, know, you don't normally wow. see in a yeah, I I just I just thought it was I just thought it was hilarious. But going through the parks, you notice these things. I'm like, okay, you know, here's the Epcot ducks, you know, Florida ducks, they're okay. Uh the egrets, they're okay. But if the ibis show up, no, the ibis can't hang out with them. They literally they just start like chasing them off and oh, wow. and things like that. And it's just 
it's it's interesting to you know to uh to see those things to stop and you know to stop and look at those things and when i bring people with me you know as you say like on my stroll and chill live streams just like okay there's this thing there's this thing you know we'll look at this we'll look at that because when i was and i'm probably going over um when i was still in the you know the cold north and it was like freezing and i'd see people out in the parks and they're at the Disney parks and, you know, they're walking and they're looking at things. And I'm like, wait, you just passed X, Y, and Z, or you just passed, you know, this, that's something that you probably want to, you know, tell people about and not knocking other people who do, you know, who do their streams. Some people seem to be in too much of a hurry to get from one attraction to that parade to whatever, and which you do usually if you're commando touring, I've done that. But there are all these other little things um, in between to like to see and you know to see and enjoy. Sure. And that's kind of like what I what I like to what I like to bring out. Maybe some people aren't interested in a certain trash can that doesn't <laughs> look like the other trash cans. Or water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, like, you know, it's it's your own it's your own thing. It's to each in his own. No, I totally get you. Yeah. So um I think it's important. I think no matter who you are, what you do, wh whatever you enjoy, that you are able to when you can, like we do, get up early, excited, get ready, go, get to your favorite place, have fun, you live your life. Life is too short to be unhappy. And uh you know, God bless America, no matter what it is, going to a park, seeing flowers. Um, those are bluebells, you oh, know. These are beautiful. Missouri is an incredibly biodiverse state because of where we're geographically located. And in that area, the bluebells, I had to hike to a river. I had to hike underneath a railroad tunnel to get there. I had to really kind of work to get to this bottom land next to a river in the Ozarks. But um it's weird nature and timing. Timing is everything. So flowers here in the Ozarks start blooming weeks ago and different species start blooming at different times. So over the course of a decade and a half, I've learned to remember and understand these rhythms and patterns and then these places where they go. So I revisit these mm -hmm. places. So the bluebells will literally be bloom blooming one weekend, the next weekend, uh, the trillium is blooming the next weekend, something else in a week, in a week or two, I'll go to a state park in the Ozarks here in Missouri, where when I walk, I go for a walk in probably 15 minutes, I'll see 15 different native species of wildflower all blooming at the same time. It's just amazing mm -hmm. to do that. And so I love travel. I, I love the art of the day trip. I love waking up early, taking stuff with me, not really having a plan. I don't, I don't have a dog and I, I don't have children. I'm the, the definition of a free spirit. So I, I fully recognize that. And I try to take advantage of that. And so I'm just trying to capture, capture nature and um, spend my time on earth here being of value to people. And I, I appreciate beauty. I appreciate Miss Lorena. Miss Lorena is a beautiful, person inside and out her channel is beautiful <laughs> she highlights beautiful things about our world and so I, I feel kind of a kinship with people like miss lorena and so i'm out here saying when can i get to this bluebell not only do i want to take a photo of this flower i have to get up early enough so i'm there at the perfect moment so the sun hits it at the perfect moment that's what i'm about right there that's me so every day is Got how I, so I'm, I'm i'm blessed i get to meet uh, amazing people like miss lorena and all my favorite youtubers and stuff and hang out and so um yeah I, it's just great to be here it really is oh well i love having you here yeah. and when i when i look at this um it's interesting because a couple of days ago i was watching Alice in Wonderland. Yes, the Disney animated classic, Alice in Wonderland. And there's a scene where Alice is in this garden 
And there are these flowers that are asking you, you're a strange species of, you know, flower. What are you? And you notice all of these animated flowers that are very distinctive in how they look and how they and how they behave. It's almost like, oh my goodness, the flower's talking because you're because they just look so beautiful and they look so realistic. And I remember um, seeing a couple of behind the scenes, you know, about Walt Disney and the animators and how much time that they would spend out in nature getting every single detail down so that when, you know, when they would render them in uh, cartoon form, they looked so 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 very lifelike. So one of the things I want to ask, uh, want to ask you when it comes to Disney and Disney animation, um, what are some of your favorite renderings in uh, Disney animation, animated films, and what is it about Disney animation do you feel is so special? I uh, I just grew up. Well, I uh, I'm from Missouri. Walt Disney was born in Chicago, but he kind of grew up in Missouri, not far from where Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain grew up. Oh. And so I think, you know, and so Walt Disney, he wanted to originally put a park in St. Louis and he almost got it accomplished, but then he had to move on to Florida. And that's the, that's the beginning of the story of things like Disney World. So there's a Midwestern connection between Walt Disney. I, you know what? I, I'm going to throw you a curveball. And okay. Um, I, I do have a degree in fine art and I, I can illustrate and I draw. I'm almost overwhelmed with choices when it comes to animation. But I'm going to say Return to Oz. Have you ever seen Return to Oz, the sequel to The Wizard of Oz? I want to say I have. And I'm probably going to have to look it up in Internet Movie Database. I think it's been years since I've seen that. The only female protagonist you recognize later from the 90s films. And so I saw that in the theater. And I could go on and on about Walt Disney, but that that's a Jim Henson production, I think. Is it is it a Disney film? Now I'm, like, totally confused. It, 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 you know what? It, it actually... Jim Henson together? I don't, I don't want to say... Now I'm... Does, does Disney have anything to do with Return to Oz? Yes, they do. Filled with Disney I adventure thought, and yeah. magic. And yeah, I, it's been years since I've seen this. I saw this film in the theater. This is the supposed straight up sequel to The Wizard of Oz. Now you think about pop culture. How important is The Wizard of Oz to America and to our pop culture? Oh. And is it here or is it here? Oh, it's, it's really, it it's here? really high. It's really it's, high. So any any sequel to The Wizard of Oz, wow. Okay, it's got to be not only good, the story, you have to tell a story of Dorothy that continues. What, this, the Tin Man, where is he? They introduce new characters in this film. I love this movie. Why can't they make a film like this now? I don't know. But... Walt Disney to me was the gold standard of entertainment. We we literally my my mom grew up with the first generation television. Sunday nights were sacred. Disney, I think it was five o'clock. The Wonderful World, the World, world Disney. of Disney. Mm -hmm. that, that, I think that my generation, Generation X, that we were right there. She she had that. We were seamlessly sat down at five. We watched Wonderful World of Walt Disney. Whether it was an old old film, a really old film that we thought, or maybe like a. 70s film that wasn't too old for us at the time the generation x people like me we're the generation gap that brings the classic disney and the nostalgia and everything forward to the future so millennials and gen z they can continue to enjoy it i think you needed us there in the 70s and 80s and the early 90s so um i do like uh i mean of course who can ever forget when you're there? Beauty and the Beast. I saw that in the theater. Oh, yeah. I'm the oldest child, so I was with my younger siblings. And mm -hmm. Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorites. It really is. And so that's just peak Disney to me. It really is. And uh, I could go on and on. Like you said, 
the animators that drew the flowers, they understood that the humans have seen all these flowers before. So if you're going to render the flower that resonates with people, classic mm -hmm. Disney animators would spend a lot of time literally drawing actual flowers like art class. And that that resonated. My cat's trying to in invade. <laughs> that that would so so that's uh, okay. Now, the wonderful thing about flowers, too, I wanted to say about flowers, everyone should check out, if you haven't seen Return to Oz, you don't have to watch The Wizard of Oz, just dive right into Return of Oz. It's, it's, it's amazing. But the thing about flowers is, flowers teach us about life, that the actual plant of the flower is there year round. You might not notice it because it doesn't have a bloom, but it's only for a few weeks out of the year that that flower actually blooms and you see the petals and the bees come to it, they pollinate it, you enjoy it and there's that moment. And so flowers, I think, they symbolize the moments in our lives. Other things symbolize long form things and other things. So I'm a moment guy, I, I, I love the moment. And, and so that's why I go to these parks. I'm sure that's why people out there, they love that moment when the roller coaster goes like this or the moment when the park opens mm -hmm. on the trail and the sun comes up and they take that photo i'm very much about the moment so that's the thing about flowers that i've learned a lot about so we're just like going on and on wow no it's like i it's like i am i'm a very like i'm a very technical person and so you but... know, the reason why these flowers go ahead i didn't want to interrupt Oh no, it's uh no, it's it's I tell people it's like I, I am I am not artsy. I'm not an artsy person, but I like beautiful art that is, I would say, true to the source as close as the source as possible. So it's like if I see a flower painting, it's like I know what a flower <laughs> looks like. Um, so I'm expecting a certain level of technical expertise when it comes to sure. you know when it comes to uh when it comes to art I, it's i was like i can't draw art but if i see good art and i want it i you know it's like i know that's something that can you know that I can relate to and that's why animation was so attractive to see it's like you have all of these pictures here that are moving into something we would never see before like what the nightmare before christmas i mean we know about stop motion i mean uh stop animation for stop motion you know we, especially if you love the old school rank and bass christmas specials and stuff like that but when you yeah. see it it's just it's gone from that and the art has like literally evolved and you see it it's just like wow it is it is just absolutely amazing. I would say that with flowers, never forget that flowers grow in a mathematical ratio. And there's a thing called the Fibonacci number. If people out there are familiar mm -hmm. with it, I'm sure <laughs> you are, you know about the Fibonacci number. And that, that when you add the mathematic way that these beautiful flowers grow and the ratios that they grow, it's just fascinating. And so that, that one has pure symmetry. Some of them are asymmetrical. Some mm -hmm. of them grow to lure a specific insect inside to pollinate. Some of them lure a specific butterfly, basically an insect, same thing. So, yeah, it's. I'm glad that we can appreciate beauty. See, I think in our world, we're, we're becoming desensitized. We're becoming a short-term attention span thing. And to mm -hmm. appreciate beauty, you have to be a little more mature and sophisticated and you know, have a little better attention span. So, yeah, that's why <laughs> I was just saying, Good. that's why when, um, when, when I go to Epcot and I go into Spaceship Earth, which I love going there, the scene that sticks out to me the most, you have the first scene with uh with Aristotle. First of all, that animatronic is freaking amazing. Where he's, you know, he's got this model and he's talking with respect to, you know, mathematics. And then you go right from there into the Renaissance era. And that part blows my mind when they talk about the explosion in, you know, mathematics, in art, in, you know, in writing. And it's just this explosion of creativity that um 
that you see and everything is there together with, you know, with Da Vinci, it's like he had, you know, his technical plans, but he also like had, you know, his, uh, his artwork and that scene just always, I mean, yeah, I like the technical stuff where, you know, you see, you know, Steve Wozniak in his, you know, in his garage yeah. together, you know, right. the, uh, the Apple computer, but sure. there's something about that Renaissance section that just continues um, to oh, blow my mind. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you should, everyone should go to Europe and visit those old cultural centers that the Renaissance really set up the age of enlightenment, the 1700s, which is something mm -hmm. that, it, that uh, uh, shaped our country. That's exactly where we come from is the age of enlightenment. So it's fascinating. The trajectory of humanity and we all come from somewhere and we should always honor our history and take interest in it and, um, you know, not be so offended by it. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Matt, first of all, this has been an amazing conversation. I've I loved, really loved doing stuff like this. Yeah. So where can people, uh, people find you and what you're working on? Right now, I have a um, short story that's out right now in the River Hills Traveler. I, oh, I'll put it in the chat. I don't know if you can show folks in the chat. Yes, I sure um, can. Let's bring us up. There we go. We, uh, in the last year, I've been writing short stories that are published in a monthly Midwestern newspaper called the River Hills Traveler. My short stories are usually broken up into four parts. Starseed and the Beaver King Part 2 was published in print and online last week. Mm. So if you're interested in my latest story, Starseed and the Beaver King takes place in the Ice Age, and the protagonist is a young Osage boy. And in this story, wow. in this story, it's kind of a Walt Disney audience-friendly story where animals talk and mm -hmm. act like humans. And so the premise is back in the Back in the day, back in the old times, animals acted more like human beings and human beings were more primitive and they're kind of diverging and converging as they as they go. And so Starseed is the protagonist. The Beaver King is the villain of the story. And the Beaver King has dammed the river that all the animals and the humans depend on. So mm -hmm. there's a serious crisis that Starseed and his animal companions, they need to go on an adventure, a journey. It's almost reminiscent of Fellowship of the Rings in a way. And so we were, oh. we were talking about old stories that we need to connect and honor and certain things. So this is an adventure story and it's in the vein of a Native American folktale. And so I've grown up loving uh, Native American culture, studying it, traveling the country, going to historic and cultural sites. And so I did a bunch of studying and research about the Osage culture. Mm -hmm. I called Oklahoma. I spoke with a representative of Osage Nation for a moment. And um, every word that I use, I read an entire Osage dictionary. And, and every word that I use is the actual Osage word. And um, so I wrote it in a Native American folktale way. And uh, it's just a lot of fun. I think, I think people will appreciate the time I took to mm -hmm. create a universe that gets going very quickly. Too often we're watching something that you watch a show, the first two or three episodes, nothing happens. And so this was an exercise in just trying to really entertain the audience, entertain, educate, stimulate. And um, mm -hmm. I totally see this. I'm trying to make this a graphic novel or something animated. This particular oh. story, not all my stories really lend itself to this. This would be a perfect animated half an hour one-off for Netflix. Um, it's great. I, I, I'm Go ahead. Oh no! I'm just I, when I hear when I hear stories stories like this, like this one that you have set up. Um, I think about well, one of the things about living um, living in Florida. I mean, I did when I lived in suburban Philadelphia, but even more so in the state of Florida, just how much native lore 
is ingrained in the state's, you know, in the state's yeah. history and yeah. some of those stories that are, you know, that are, that are out there. So I think this is, this is amazing. And when I describe, yeah. I'm, I'm so glad that you, that you're kind of down with this thing. When I, I, I researched like in the ice age, the, the glaciation sheet came down into my home state of Missouri and it stopped at the Missouri river. This story takes place along the Missouri river. So when I describe the landscape and I talk about how it looks, I'm trying to portray it as accurately as possible. So mm -hmm. yes, this is kind of a story steeped in fantasy and folklore where the animals talk like people and they have their, their characters and they interact, but it's really in a setting that will seem authentic in every way. So I, I just want to entertain. I love, one of my favorite things is what resonates with me is a really good villain. I don't know about you, but some of my favorite characters of all time, Darth Vader, the Joker and Batman, mm -hmm. the villains resonate with me more than the protagonist. So in a sense, Starseed, he never speaks a word and that, that raised the bar and made my task more difficult writing the story. Mm -hmm. He's a silent protagonist. Mm -hmm. King is the villain and he is, um, there are scenes, like you said, about Poe. There are things that the Beaver King says in his monologue, which I try to make him very colorful and very charismatic, that I, I, um, I honor Lawrence of Arabia. There's a character in Lawrence of Arabia played by Anthony Quinn named Ada Al-Butai. Ada, Ada Al-Butai, I'm butchering his name right now. <laughs> He's a fanciful, colorful character. Mm -hmm. So I kind of interject that character sometimes into the Beaver King. So, um, yeah, look for it at the riverhillstraveler.com. And uh, part two just came out. And uh, I just want okay. to know. Yeah. Well, folks, I will have a link to this amazing short story here and to the uh to the website so that'll be in the description box of this video as well as your um your account on x yeah thank you ozark underscore matt at x.com yes so definitely uh check him out on x i i love the nature pictures um they're just they're be they're beautiful i wish i could shoot pictures like that but uh, I don't quite have the equipment to do that. So when I try to catch it like a butterfly, sometimes if it's standing there long enough, I can get a picture, but I would love to catch that moment where it's actually in flight and doing doing something. So I'm not up there, <laughs> I'm up there quite. Maybe when I retire. Maybe I, when you retire, yeah. Like that, but yeah, I'm always, I'm always fascinated. Uh, nature, nature photography, animals out there it's like they're okay you know when they're sitting there not really doing anything but when they start moving and you know and and doing things i don't have to prolong it a little bit longer but case in point like with my scroll and chill live streams um when i go to the animal kingdom which i do except in the summer because it's just hot and animals don't want to do anything <laughs> but when i go over to the um i think it's the pangani forest trail so there's like two things that i like one is the primate exhibit that's there. So it's a family of gorillas and they're there in various ages. And just the things that they do is just, I, I love watching the primates. I have since I was a kid going to the Philadelphia Zoo. So the other thing that I like at the Animal Kingdom on that trail is there's like this wall of glass. So you can look underwater so you can see the cichlids, but there are also two hippos that live in that habitat. That's and right. sometimes the hippos will kind of come out of the water and they'll open their mouth. It's just like the coolest thing ever. Wow. And then another one where sometimes they'll be sitting on a rock, if, if you're fortunate, they'll be sitting on a rock with the cichlids kind of, you know, like grooming them and everything. And occasionally, you know, they'll open their mouth kind of in the water, close it, go down, turn around, you know, kind of get more comfortable. But it's like seeing that motion and to be able to like to capture that on camera when they're doing other things like that. I think it's just, I think it's just fascinating. Thank you so much. It, I, I, I hope in the future that you take great photos of your moments. I know you can, you're, you're a pro already at your videos. 
Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing more stuff from you, Matt. I know we run into each other on uh, WW Pro streams and other friends that are like uh, run the same circles with. So any last thoughts before we wrap up this amazing conversation? Uh, no, I just, I'm, I'm just here, uh, working on stuff and I, I'm working on a song. Maybe I'll have a song to share with you and I'm just trying to write. And, uh, I really appreciate being invited here. And every time I'm invited on a stream with the, our friends and our, our, our family that we hang out with, I always really look forward to it. I really look forward to speaking to the audience. And so, um, I just, uh, this last week I, vi I viewed a total solar eclipse and I'll leave the audience and you, Miss Lorraine, and everything with this. On Monday, at 5 a.m., I left the city before everyone tried to leave. I got in the totality zone in the Ozarks, drove up a mountain, unpacked my car, pitched a tent, sat there in an open glade with a telescope, my camera. And um, I laid back in my tent on my sleeping bag in the middle of the eclipse. And I'm out in nature all the time. And I could just, when the moon started going in front of the sun, I could literally feel something going on, like the gravity of the situation I could feel on a gut level. Oh, wow. As the totality almost hit, as the moon is almost fully in front of the sun, the lady next to me from Minnesota says, you know, I feel queasy. And I could feel, she validated what I felt. I could feel that gut level thing. So being in the totality of the eclipse where it totally goes dark the the temperature drops 10 to 12 degrees the wind hits you you see the sun it was an amazing life-changing experience and i just want everybody out there life's too short to be unhappy this is my long winded Absolutely. life is too short to be unhappy. if there's something that you love to do you want to do you want to go to a park you want to start a youtube channel you have a story to write a story to tell a song to sing quit procrastinating Get to it now, and and um, your life will change. Doors will open. You'll hang out with wonderful people like Miss Lorena. And uh, I'm an optimist, so I'm going to keep being an optimist. And thank you so much. Oh, you are so very welcome, Matt. It's been a pleasure having you on. And folks, please do go check out Matt's X feed. Definitely go to the website, River Hills Traveler, to check all of that out, what he's working on. Thank you so much for watching. And please do, if you have any questions for Matt, please do drop them in the uh, comments section. So we can definitely give you some feedback there. So folks, take care. As always, thank you so much for supporting my channel. Hope you enjoyed my latest guest with an audience with the queen. You all take care. And of course, we will see you next time. Bye.